Let's jump right in with Rose McGowan. We're gonna discuss the controversy surrounding Hollywood's prominent figures and their relationship with talk show host Oprah Winfrey. Rose McGowan, an influential figure in the hashtag MeToo movement and star of the Scream franchise, is distanced from this trend. McGowan brought attention to a photo from the 2014 Critics' Choice Movie Awards, which shows Winfrey kissing a disgraced producer in Hollywood. McGowan captioned her tweet with some strong words saying, I'm glad more are seeing the ugly truth of at Oprah. I wish she were real, but she isn't. And added that she is supporting a sick power structure for personal gain. She is as fake as they come, hashtag lizard. This tweet sparked a lot of debate and speculation among fans with some defending Winfrey and others criticizing her. However, it's important to note that this is not the first time McGowan has called out Winfrey. Now, we all know how relevant Oprah has remained within the industry, so do you think she's part of the problem in Hollywood? I mean, she's pretty powerful. Let us know in the comments below. On to the next, Seth MacFarlane. MacFarlane? I don't know. In a tweet posted in 2020, MacFarlane acknowledged Winfrey's positive influence through her career as a television host and philanthropist and praised her for using her platform to bring attention to important issues and making a positive impact in society. However, he also expressed his disappointment in Winfrey's frequent promotion of pseudoscience and conspiracy theories on her talk show. He urged Winfrey to use her influential voice to promote facts and science instead of spreading misinformation. The tweet sparked a debate among fans of both McFarlane and Winfrey. Some supported Seth's call for accountability, while others defended Winfrey's right to her own opinions. Despite their differences in opinion, both McFarlane and Winfrey have used their platforms to bring attention to important social issues. Even those who we admire and respect are not immune to criticism and should be all held accountable for their actions. Kid Rock. Kid Rock has never been one to hide his feelings towards Oprah Winfrey. As TMZ highlighted before, Kid Rock had a public outburst about Winfrey at his own establishment, Kid Rock's big honky tonk and steakhouse in Nashville, which resulted in him being escorted out. He tweeted, years ago, my team tried to get me on the Oprah Winfrey show. Her team wanted me to list five reasons why I loved her and her show. I flatly refused. That's the end of it. Kid Rock hasn't been shy about expressing his feelings. In 2008, he clarified his sentiments, telling The Independent, Oprah Winfrey just doesn't sit well with me. I don't trust her. Maybe that's because I'm not one of the 150 million women who hang on her every word. Damn. Kid Rock has made his disdain for Oprah evident on multiple occasions. In 2010, he went as far as calling her a bitch during a live performance at the CMA Awards. However, Kid Rock's animosity towards Winfrey seems to stem from more than just personal feelings. In an interview with The Guardian in 2015, Kid Rock explained his dislike for Winfrey by saying, I don't hate Oprah, quite the opposite. I have a lot of admiration and respect for what she's been able to accomplish in her career. My issue is with the way she uses her platform to push certain agendas and manipulate public opinion. It's obvious Kid Rock believes Winfrey has too much influence over her viewers and uses it to push her own agenda. He also expressed concern over the potential for her to sway political opinion, stating, I think that's where a lot of people get turned off by Oprah or any celebrity using their platform for political gain. Up next is Seal. Singer Seal didn't hold back his disapproval of Winfrey making his feelings known on social media. Back in 2018, the acclaimed vocalist, best known for his hit song Kiss from a Rose, leveled allegations against Winfrey, claiming she had knowledge of a disgraced producer whose name shall not be named, his actions, for decades. He posted a now deleted Instagram photo of Winfrey with said producer with a scathing caption. You'd heard the rumors, hadn't you? Yet you turned a blind eye to the truth that he was preying on unsuspecting, ambitious young actresses. Apologies for my oversight. He continued, when you've been a part of the problem for decades, yet everyone suddenly sees you as the solution. Hashtag sanctimonious Hollywood. Singer Seal's comments about Oprah Winfrey and disgraced producer sparked controversy and brought attention to the larger issue of assault and harassment in Hollywood. While some praised Seal for speaking out, others criticized him for his harsh words towards Winfrey. This incident also highlighted the complicated relationship between celebrities and their involvement in important social issues. It serves as a reminder that everyone has a responsibility to educate themselves and use their platform for good. The conversation about misconduct in the entertainment industry continues and it is important to listen to all voices and work towards creating a safer environment for everyone. So we must ensure that our society provides equal opportunities and safe spaces for all individuals. Only then can we truly progress towards a more inclusive and just society. 
Up next, Ludacris. Following his role in the 2004 movie Crash, Ludacris, otherwise known as Christopher Brian Bridges, made an appearance on Winfrey's TV program. The intent was to discuss the film, but the conversation took a different turn. Ludacris told GQ she got many of my points, keeping hers intact. It's her show, but we were discussing racial discrimination, and I felt she was challenging me excessively as a rapper, disregarding my role as an actor for the show. He added, at first I wasn't even invited to the show, it was only the night before when they rang me up to say I could come. After filming, Winfrey and I had a short five minute chat. The impression I got was that she believes by hosting rappers, she's giving them more power. It felt like being in a place where you're not welcome. It was already quite awkward. Following the controversial interview, Ludacris received backlash from both fans and critics. Many accused him of being disrespectful towards Winfrey and not understanding the purpose of her show. However, Ludacris defended himself by stating that he was simply speaking his truth and standing up for himself. The incident shed light on a larger issue within the entertainment industry, the portrayal of rappers and hip hop artists. Many have argued that these artists are often stigmatized and pigeonholed into negative stereotypes, while their talents as actors or intellectuals are overlooked. Jason Momoa. In the aftermath of the devastating wildfires that swept through Maui in August 2023, Hollywood star Jason Momoa pointed fingers at two prominent figures, Oprah Winfrey and Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Momoa charged them with, in his own words, stealing money from the poor. This controversy arose from a fundraising initiative that Winfrey and Johnson had organized with the aim of aiding the victims of these wildfires. In the months following the controversy, both Winfrey and Johnson have responded to Momoa's allegations in an exclusive interview with Oprah Magazine. Winfrey stated that she was deeply saddened by Momoa's accusations and denied any wrongdoing on her part. She explained that the fundraiser had been a collaborative effort with Johnson and that all of the proceeds went towards helping the victims of the wildfires. She also added that she had personally donated a large sum to the cause. Angelina Jolie, in an unexpected twist, appears that two globally recognized humanitarians, Angelina and Oprah, have had some friction. When Winfrey was launching her esteemed project, the Oprah Winfrey Leadership Academy for Girls in South Africa, she reportedly reached out to Jolie for assistance. However, according to an insider's account shared with Star Magazine, in 2007, Jolie declined. Winfrey had anticipated Jolie's support given her love for Africa. Disappointed, Winfrey vowed never to ask for Jolie's help in her humanitarian projects in the future. The source also claimed that there might be unresolved issues between the two, stemming from Winfrey's support for Jennifer Aniston during the well-publicized split with Brad Pitt. In recent years, there have been multiple reports of tension and rivalry between Angelina and Oprah. While both women are highly influential figures in their respective fields, many wonder what has caused this apparent friction between them. David Letterman Many assume the beef between David and Oprah started because of an awkward joke at the 1995 Academy Awards, but according to Letterman, the disagreement actually sparked well before that. In a 2010 episode of The Daily Show, he told Jon Stewart, the feud predates the Academy Awards. She had a problem with me long before then. He narrated an encounter from a vacation they both happened to be on. Oprah was with Stedman and I was with my then girlfriend Regina. We were having lunch at the same restaurant. I jokingly told Regina, let's have Oprah pick up our check and that's what happened. Letterman convinced the waiter that Winfrey would pay for their lunch. This according to Letterman is where the feud started, but Oprah has a different take on the feud's origin. In a 2012 interview with CBS News, she said she felt uncomfortable on his show and avoided any contact with him for 16 years, during which he continuously made jokes at her expense. They've since reconciled their differences. Joan Rivers, in her first national television debut on The Tonight Show in 1985, Oprah Winfrey faced an unexpected blow from the late Joan Rivers. As Winfrey recounts in her book, Food, Health, and Happiness, she was just getting comfortable when Rivers threw a curveball question, so how'd you gain the weight? Winfrey was taken aback on her big day with the word fat echoing in her mind. Winfrey explains further that Rivers from behind Johnny's large desk scolded her for letting herself gain weight. Rivers' manicured finger pointed at her, reminding her of her single status and challenging her to lose 15 pounds before her next visit. And finally, 50 Cent. In the 2006 edition of Elle magazine, rapper 50 Cent made a controversial comment about Oprah Winfrey, referring to her as an Oreo. He voiced his dissatisfaction, arguing that while Oprah started her career focusing on the perspectives of black women, she had gradually shifted her attention towards middle-aged white American women to such an extent that he believed she had become one of them. To throw further shade on Oprah, 50 Cent even named his miniature schnauzer after her. However, in 2012, they set their differences aside and had an open discussion on an episode of Oprah's Next Chapter. Visiting 50 Cent at his grandmother's house, Oprah listened as the rapper
rapper expressed his grievances about her show's apparent snub of hip-hop artists and her stance against the use of the N-word. The relationship between celebrities and media moguls like Oprah is complex and ever-changing. Some stars have used their platforms to voice their concerns or share their experiences, painting a multifaceted picture of the celebrity life and the media industry. Number 10, Cindy Crawford. Model and actress Cindy Crawford has called Oprah out over their 1986 interview that took place on her show, where Oprah asked the then 20-year-old to expose herself to the crowd. Crawford reflected on the interview in a new documentary called The Supermodels on Apple TV+. Plus. Everyone has a plus now. The documentary spotlights the career of several models like Naomi Campbell, Linda Evangelista, and of course, Cindy Crawford. In a clip from the documentary, Winfrey is heard introducing the then aspiring supermodel to the Oprah Winfrey show before she asked, hey, did she always have this body? <laughs> this is unbelievable. Stand up. Now that's what I call a body. She's visibly just uncomfortable and sheepishly stands up before the studio audience cheers as she shows off her figure. According to Cindy, she felt like a child in that moment being told what to do by a superior. She felt that the moment was more of a show us why you're worthy of being here type thing. At the time, this was just some weird thing that Oprah asked her to do, but it morphed and mutated into one of the most uncomfortable moments of her early years in modeling. The most shocking thing for her was the fact that this was Oprah Winfrey trying to tell her what to do. The woman known for kindness and generosity and cars made her feel like a puppet. Number nine, Jason Momoa, Aquaman, the enemy of Dom Toretto, and now a man speaking out on Oprah Winfrey and Maui. Jason Momoa is a gifted actor, and by all accounts, he is a gifted person as well. Recently, several news outlets have claimed that Jason is on the opposing side of this whole Maui fun thing. If you don't know what that's about, go check out some of our previous videos about Oprah Winfrey where we do it in, you know, deep dive. According to these outlets, Jason posted a video to Instagram in which he addresses the fires and offers his own support to the victims while never actually mentioning anyone by name. He does mention that some may use this as a way to exploit or make profit, but that was not his intentions. The clip went viral and as you can guess, outlets were interpreting everything that they could out of it, with the biggest headline being Jason Momoa calls out Oprah for wildfires. While not completely inaccurate, the general consensus is that there is actually no bad you know, juju between these people. Jason has yet to specify who would profit from this, but since the backlash, he's been posting videos on a regular basis, updating people on the situation, and his position in assisting so far. Of course, he's already donated lots of money to the island and has teamed up with Dwayne Johnson to do public functions and collaborations and raise awareness, so that's great considering where it spawned from. Number eight, Dwayne Johnson. Now, when it comes to the whole Maui fun situation, there is one person who is usually left out of the conversation, and that is Dwayne Johnson. Johnson is, of course, one of the most bankable men in Hollywood, starring in like a million franchises, mostly in the jungle. He decided to partner with Oprah Winfrey to create the People Fund of Maui, donated $5 million of his own money to match Oprah's donation. The Rock received a large amount of criticism, but not nearly as much as Oprah did. The main reason being is that The Rock actually has a significantly smaller net worth, and the money that he donated was actually his own money. He's still only a millionaire, everyone. He's just as poor as the rest of us. Thousands of his followers have defended him rather than passing judgment because, hey, $5 million is a ton of money and it's gonna make a lot of people's lives that much easier. Unfortunately, there is not a lot of information regarding his position towards Oprah, but the comments on their posts have been turned off and the People's Fund of Maui has raised a lot of money since, so at least something good's coming from all the negativity. Number seven, Tom Hanks. Rumors have been circulating online that Tom Hanks may have received some inside information about the Maui wildfires that pertain to Oprah Winfrey. Now, a ton of videos have been published online in the last like couple months claiming that Oprah orchestrated the Maui wildfires and hired a private team of firefighters to make it look more real. According to several media outlets, Tom was made aware of a secret plot because, you know, he's so close to Oprah. The two have been known to share the occasional night out and some pasta. Well, it turns out that these were in fact rumors created by an AI. Someone told a computer to write a story about Tom Hanks and Oprah, and it came up with Oprah sets Maui on fire. So that should tell you how good AI is. While a catching thumbnail and surely a fun bit of information, the reality is that Tom has no idea what's going on. When asked about his position on the Maui fund, he had nothing but positive things to say and is actually a little disappointed with the reaction from the world. When America's dad tells you he's disappointed in you, that that's just an extra level of hurt. Number six, Oprah Winfrey herself. Oprah 
Sora is taking one of the bigger spots on this list because she has been trying to warn us about herself since day one. Her talk show is all about bringing the most vulnerable people on and getting views. She's brought violence victims, health experts, fake psychologists, and even convicted felons onto her program all for the sake of making a few bucks. As the years went by, her style was adapted by more and more studios, creating shows like Dr. Phil and Dr. Oz, who were both equally as controversial. Not to mention a few years ago when she wrote a book detailing her life and rise to the top, she revealed some truly dark things about her home life, again covered that in detail in a different video. She herself was considered to be a tyrant by her family, but it seems that whatever negative juju was in that house rubbed off on her forever. Now, there are actually a pretty limited number of celebrities who warned us about Oprah because overall most stories are fake that are out there in the world. So let's talk about some lives that have been destroyed by Oprah Winfrey when they actually did go on her show for real. Number five, a fabricated memoir. Oprah launched her book club in 1996, a reading encouraging segment from her talk show that turned any book that she chose into a bestseller. In September of 2005, she picked A Million Little Pieces, a brutal and painful memoir by James Fret about his years long struggle with substance control issues. A Million Little Pieces became the best selling non fiction book of the year, and Frey was asked to appear on her talk show to discuss the book that Oprah called gut wrenching. However, the following year, a news outlet ran a very expositive article about Frey after it was discovered that he made up or juiced large portions of his memoir. For example, there is a section of the book that tells the story of Frey surviving a fatal train crash that took the lives of two teenagers. He was never on that train nor did he have any involvement with that situation. Weeks after the article broke, Oprah asked Frey to return to the show where he faced livid viewers and an even more livid Oprah. She told James that she felt duped and betrayed and that feeling was shared by her audience and millions of people who read that book. She asked why James felt the need to lie to herself and the readers and he tried everything, making every excuse that he could think of. He claimed that he altered a lot of the details but that the overall plot was real. The studio audience responded with a massive wave of boo gasps, and groans. Winfrey later apologized for the mistreatment from her audience as it was not her intention, but the damage was already done and his career as a writer is currently non-existent. Number four, Harry and Meghan. Prince Harry and his wife Meghan have appeared in the public eye more and more in the past few years. After leaving the duties of their royal family to live on their own, they decided to capitalize on their so-called fame by releasing a series of different medias, books, podcasts, documentaries, and in 2021, they sat down with Oprah Winfrey to air out every piece of dirty laundry that was left in their hamper. Of course, the royal family does not appreciate these secrets being shared with, you know, the world. So not only was Harry blacklisted by them, but the interview kind of soiled the royal's reputation as good people. According to fans of Oprah, the interview made the couple look more villainous than they surely intended. Following the interview, their public image was slightly tainted, and with more media coming out, it just made the situation even worse. Meghan got a podcast and couldn't keep up with material for the first year. They made a documentary that people just don't like, so who knows what they'll get up to next. It certainly will not be anything good. Number three, Lance Armstrong. Seven time Tour de France winner Lance Armstrong has gone down in history as a man who is unable to ride a bike without using some chemical training wheels. In an interview with Oprah from 2013, Lance was brought on to discuss the allegations floating around regarding his status as a Tour de France winner. Several sources claimed that Lance had to take performance enhancing substances to win each race, as well as a type of transfusion involving the red life juice that flows inside of all of us. Armstrong went on air and fessed up to every single thing that had been claimed about him, except he did deny the notion that he was some kind of a mastermind who was controlling his teammates and forcing them to join in his extracurricular activities. But amidst his omission of guilt, say that 10 times fast, there was a moment where he tried to pin the situation on his battle with cancer. He wraps it up by saying that he should have tried harder to cancel the culture rather than create create more of a problem. He was stripped of all seven Tour de France titles and has since lived in exile among the cycling world and honestly just the world in general. Number 10. We'll never marry Stedman. Oprah and her partner Stedman have been together for a long, long time but have never actually gotten married. While Stedman has never explained why this is, Oprah shared her side of the story. According to Oprah, getting married would mean that she would not be able to, quote, have her own life, claiming that everything she's built on her own would be at risk, like he was some kind of a career 
nuclear parasite. The strangest part about her logic behind this is the fact that she said on air that she actually wanted Stedman to propose to her as soon as possible. Their relationship has survived a lot despite the years of rumors and speculation. However, a source close to Oprah said that in her four years with the show, she could tell that there was absolutely nothing there with this man. Oprah just wanted to portray herself as a woman who loved her husband, and he wasn't even her husband, so she was just someone who loved her guy. In reality, Stedman probably has a house separate to Oprah, but like one fifth of the size. Number nine, she's a diva. On air, Oprah is portrayed as this wholesome, sweet lady, but according to her family, there is an unknown side to Oprah hidden from fans for years. According to Barbara, Oprah's stepmother, she is one of the most controlling people that you're ever going to meet in your entire life. She claims that Oprah would not allow them to stay at her house whenever they would try to visit, forcing them to stay in hotels with money out of their own pockets. Barbara also said that Oprah was quick to anger when it came to her staff, with several people being fired over the years, left and right. But that's not all. Despite being a billionaire, Barbara allows Oprah to stay at her house when she comes for visits, but apparently Oprah hates every second of that. From the first time she stayed till probably last week, Oprah just complains about her bed sheets that aren't a thousand threads and that her bath towels aren't big enough. But big bath towels are a luxury, so I get that one. This woman has billions of dollars to do literally anything that she wants, but apparently the only thing she wants to do is make her family feel bad. Number eight, her spiritual beliefs. I'm gonna start this entry by clarifying that I'm not making fun of your beliefs if you're spiritual. Please know this entry is not about you, it's about Oprah and just Oprah. In an interview with Harper Bazaar, Oprah mentioned her daily morning routine that starts at 8.30 with various spiritual exercises. After reading Gathered Truths, she opens an app called Bowl of Saki that delivers teachings of the Sufi, followed by some light meditation. The controversy here comes from Oprah inviting several self-fulfillment gurus onto her show and gushing about them over the years, and especially Guru Gary Zuka's preachings. Oprah herself claimed to have secret spiritual knowledge about tapping into personal courage and giving general spiritual advice. She stopped diving too deep into spirituality after the backlash from her fans and readers of her magazine. Number two, where's the beef? In spring 1996, the United Kingdom apparently experienced an outbreak of bovine spongiform encephalopathy, or mad cow disease, since I can't pronounce that last word properly. According to the FDA, the disease destroys cow's central nervous systems and if humans eat the infected meat, you get zombies! No, but they can contract a deadly variant called Kritzfeld Jacob disease. During the mad cow scare, the Oprah Winfrey show booked Howard Lyman. The former cattle rancher had adopted a vegetarian lifestyle and went to work for the Humane Society's Eating with Co-Science Animal Welfare Campaign. And he appeared on the show to discuss the threat of mad cows to America. He pointed out that feeding the remains of mad cow to infected cattle or other animals could have facilitated the spread and that such practices were actually pretty common in the US. Oprah was stunned and vowed that she would never eat a burger ever again. It turns out her influence and her millions of viewers were so large that only a few hours after the episode aired and she declared to never eat a hamburger again, the price of beef? plummeted, staying at an all time low. Like anyone who had stocks in the beef industry just not good. One Texas rancher lost an estimated $6.7 million and organized a class action lawsuit against Oprah and her show for talking trash about American beef. After a six week trial, she won, leaving someone with no farm and out thousands of extra dollars in legal fees. And at number one, Tom Cruise. Despite this man being in Mission Impossible, he has been in a lot of movies produced by Tom Cruise. You didn't think Hollywood forgot about the Oprah show, did ya? Okay, didn't. Following the announcement that he was engaged to Katie Holmes in the early 2000s, Tom appeared on an episode of the Oprah Winfrey Show that has gone down in history as one of the most chaotic TV moments of all time. From the moment he steps on stage, things are just going wrong. He throws his arms out in the air, he rubs Oprah's shoulder like she's a genie or she's got a stain that just won't come out. Tom jumped on her couch, grabbed her hands, and she couldn't even get a question out. Eventually, Oprah was like, all right, whatever, just bring Katie Holmes out, and the cameras followed Tom as he ran around the studio trying to get her, like he was the nature guy running through a jungle like Steve Irwin back in the day. The moment cemented Tom as a man with many hidden personalities, and while it has not affected his work as an actor, ever since that day, whenever he's brought in for press of any kind, all entrances and exits must be locked just to be safe. Number seven, 
wild child. Several books have been published about Oprah over the years. Some of them were from her, some of them were not. In her own book that she wrote herself, she revealed that growing up, she was far from this easy kid to handle. When she was young, she was sent to live with her father Vernon after Oprah was caught stealing from her mom. Despite being an on-screen persona known for charity and kindness, she was actually a menace throughout most of her life, according to her family. As I've mentioned on several lists before this, Oprah's stepmother, oh, and I also said it on this one. As I mentioned just previously on this list, Oprah's stepmother is not allowed to stay at her house and she's known to be pretty controlling. She admitted to doing some pretty troubling things at a young age, including staging an amnesia bout where she broke several things in her mom's house and called the police pretending not to know what happened. Yeah, according to Oprah's mom, she was uncontrollable, ungrateful, and I'm pretty sure after that situation, just a little bit crazy. Number six, her buddy, Dr. Phil. Oprah's not just responsible for many hopes and dreams being squashed live on air, but she is also the creator of many talk show celebrities, like health expert Dr. Oz and life coach Dr. Phil. Before Dr. Phil had his own show, Oprah had asked him and his courtroom consulting firm to help with the trial. And before even meeting Oprah, Phil actually had zero interest in being a television personality, but Oprah decided, hey, I'm gonna force this guy to do it, you know, convince him, make him see the light. According to Phil, she helped him understand the power of these shows and what they were truly made for. Profit. For Phil, he brings people on his show who are struggling with personal issues that just so happen to be great for television, like the Cash Me Outside girl. Dr. Phil made her famous, because that's fair. But it's not just Phil that's had some controversial moments. Her other protege, Dr. Oz, has had a lot of rough moments over the years. His show is centered around medicine and health. He brings so-called health experts on week after week. My mom used to love this show, so unfortunately I'm very familiar with this man. Oprah was partnered with both of these people, meaning that whenever they got money, she got some of it too. She doesn't like to advertise how much she actually makes from these guys, but considering how many episodes they have and how long the programs have been running for, it's probably a decent little chunk of cash. Number five, you know, let's get into some of the celebrities that don't like Oprah now because honestly, there's not a lot of secrets that haven't been revealed. Number five, Seth MacFarlane. The creator of Family Guy and the TED series is not a fan of Oprah Winfrey. During the whole 2020 situation with masks and the isolation and you know what I'm talking about about, Seth decided to share some words of wisdom about Oprah Winfrey. He started by acknowledging that Oprah had done some pretty altruistic things with her career, but that she has used her platform to amplify the voices of outlandish characters rather than legitimate scientists or medical professionals. The post included a link to the LA Times that discussed misinformation from Dr. Phil and of course from Dr. Oz. He was claiming that a ton of what was discussed on their shows was nothing more than misinformation and entertaining disasters. The Cash Me Outside Girl, the purple guy who drank silver water like it was his job, and so many more that I can't actually talk about on the internet. He called Oprah out for starting out as a legitimate show with the goal of education, and instead it just kind of morphed into this misinformative cartoon. Number four. Rose McGowan. A ton of A-listers out there will be on Oprah's side through thick and thin. That's just the way it is. However, Scream alumni and Me Too activist Rose McGowan is not one of those people. Former Charm star tweeted a photo from 2014 involving Oprah Winfrey kissing the cheek of one of the most disgraced men in Hollywood history. I can't say his name and we can't put pictures of him up on this video, but he looks like Java the Hutt and he worked with Quentin Tarantino, so I'm just gonna call him Java the Hutt for the rest of this video. The photo was taken from the 2014 Critics' Choice Awards. She posted on Twitter that she was glad to see the ugly truth about Oprah coming to light. She wished Oprah were real, but she's not. She's as fake as they come. Hashtag lizard. No, she didn't add that last part, but I did. Winfrey claimed she didn't know what was going on back then and regretted being so close to such a terrible man. A terrible man that I really wish we could talk about, but <laughs> can't do that. No, it's not happening. Number three. Kid Rock. Kid has never been shy about his opinions on anything, especially when it comes to Oprah. A while back, Kid Rock was escorted out of his own steakhouse in Nashville, Tennessee for ranting about Oprah in a no-no juice-fueled tirade. He told TMZ that his PR team actually tried to get him on Oprah at one point, and Oprah's team just wanted Kid to write down five reasons why he loved Oprah's show. That was it. And he said F that and threw that offer out the window. Over the following years and to this day, he's tweeted his opinions and feelings about Oprah, with the big summary being that he just kinda doesn't vibe with her. Literally saying that he could not explain why, maybe it was just because he didn't believe she was nice or charitable, but he was certain that she was secretly a menace and 
look where we are now. Number two, Mel Gibson. All right, there has been a ton of misinformation spread across the internet since this whole Oprah thing has gone down. For a while, people believed that Jason Momoa and Tom Hanks had inside information on Oprah and that it needed to be shared with the world. But that was all a lie and neither of those people ever actually said a word about Oprah. Another celebrity brought into this mix is Mel Gibson. This man is fueled by controversy, so it's understandable. For the past few weeks, clips and comments have been making their way across the globe, alleging that Mel Gibson has this inside scoop on Oprah's secret agenda, then he's ready to share it with the world. But once again, this is a lie. It turns out that someone out there loves using AI to make stuff, and it would appear that someone somewhere wrote controversial Oprah into a bar and bam, there was a script. Now, I don't use AI for a lot of stuff, so I'm not really sure if that's the process or not, so that could have been a silly sentence to say. Mel has spoken out claiming that he's never actually received any inside information on Oprah, and that he's been fairly neutral on the whole Maui thing, so the so-called hate towards her just doesn't exist. And at number one, the Maui Funds scandal. Now who would have guessed this lady who was famous for handing out cars on her show got cancelled by the world? Well it's probably because she made a career ending mistake when herself and Dwayne broke the one rule of being rich, don't ask poor people for the money. A while ago Oprah and The Rock announced that they would be starting a relief fund for the victims of Maui, and the People's Fund of Maui was given a solid like 10 million dollars to get off the ground. Which is great, 10 million dollars, it's a lot of money, donated by Oprah Winfrey and Dwayne Johnson combined. So so why is it just Oprah that gets so much hate? Well it's cause she has a net worth of like 2.8 billion dollars which is a lot of money. The world is collectively furious at Oprah for having the audacity to ask working class citizens for charity when most people can barely afford to put food on their table. Not to mention the 5 million dollars that Oprah actually put into the fund it turns out was taxed money so it's not actually her money. She was just like oh that's nice I'm just gonna put this in here for now. The Rock and Oprah donated 5 million dollars each which is great but again 5 million dollars to Oprah is like $500 to us. It's not a lot. Oprah addressed all the hate online, telling the Daily Mail that she's just disappointed in the reaction from the world. No one is focusing on the good things in the people of Maui. Instead, the world is just mad that she asked them to give her a nickel. Those are evil Oprah secrets. There is no more information that I can share with you about this woman.